Okay guys, so today we are going to be creating a textured cupcake. We're going to use lines and shapes and pattern to create all the implied textures that you see, including the sprinkles and the ridged um, cupcake holder and even the wallpaper in the background. So get ready, it's a lot of fun. For this lesson, we're gonna talk about texture and it's the way that something feels to the touch or looks to the eye. So if you were to feel your hair, how does that feel? Is it soft? Is it rough? Is it spiky? Think about how things feel. Our new word is implied texture, and that is texture that isn't real. It is created using lines, dots, shapes, and patterns. These are the kind of textures that illustrators use. So when you actually feel the page of the book, it might feel smooth, but the artist uses the lines and shapes to create a pattern that makes it look like it's furry or fuzzy. So we talked about some of the examples, smooth, rough, fuzzy, slimy, fluffy, things like that. Our learning goal today is I can create a work of art using various implied textures. So that's what we're gonna be using today. For this project, you're gonna need a paper and pencil. And if you have them available, you could use crayons, color pencils, or even watercolor paints, but be sure to ask your parents before you do that. Okay, so to start off today, I'm gonna to start with my paper portrait style which is nice and tall. That gives us enough room to add the frosting on our cupcakes. So to start, I'm gonna start with a little wrapper that the cupcake kind of sits in. So I'm gonna make a curved line near the bottom of my paper. I wanna leave a little bit of room on the sides so I can go a little bit wider as I go up. I'm gonna create a diagonal line going towards the left and a diagonal line going towards the right. Now to create our first texture, our first implied texture, we wanna make it kind of zigzag so it looks like the top of those little muffin cups. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back and forth with my zigzag line all the way across the paper until I get to the other line. And that gives us kind of that little rib, ridged edge that we need. Another thing to do is to create lines coming down from each point. Before we do the frosting, I like to add a little teeny curved line. This is where the actual cake of the cupcake would start. And then I do that on either side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a line that goes all the way across. Now to create that fluffy frosting, we want some of those textures in there. I like to do a curved line. And it doesn't have to be a certain way. Everyone's frosting looks a little bit different. And I usually make one big curve and then one small curve. And then what I like to do is I take one of them and I kind of bring it in a little bit. Then I do it again. So I'm gonna go in a little bit, do one more curve and another one over here. And I just kind of alternate my curves. Now, once I have two, I also like to make that little spiral top. So I wanna make it kind of look like it's pointed at the top. So I just make a curve up and connect it just so it has that little point to the top of that cupcake frosting. Now here's kind of the fun part. You can add on things that you like on your cupcakes. So if I wanna add a cherry on top, I can draw a circle, maybe put like a little stem on the cherry. I could add sprinkles. And all of these little details are adding more implied textures. So even though the paper feels smooth, you can still envision those sprinklies, how they would feel, the texture. And what I'm basically doing is just adding little designs and patterns using shapes and lines. Maybe I'll add on some different types of sprinkles as well. So round ones. 
Once I'm happy with how much I have on there, the last step with pencil is just to draw the table that the cupcake is sitting on. So I wanna make a horizontal line and I don't wanna put it right on the edge. If I put it here, it's gonna look at the cupcakes falling off the table. So I actually wanna move up a little bit. And what I wanna do is start on one side. I'm gonna bump the cupcake, jump over it and finish the line on the other side. So now it looks like the cupcake is on a table. Now what you could do after this is if you have crayons or color pencils, you can begin to color. If you have paints, maybe you could paint the background or some of the cupcake as well. I'm gonna show you a time-lapse video of how I would do it. Um, I use crayons first and I put some patterns on the wall in the background and I color in some of the little things. And then I go back in with paint for the final part just to kind of fill in some of the bigger areas. So I'm gonna show you that. I hope you enjoyed this lesson.